question 7. So we need to um, differentiate this g of x function and we're going to use the product rule. So let's start off just by um, multiplying out the x squared by the bracket 1 minus x to give us x squared minus x cubed. So that's our u and our v is e to the minus 2x. So differentiating each of these we get this and then uh, using the product rule our g, g, g dash x equals u dv dx plus v du dx so this times this plus this times this. Uh, we can factorize taking out our e to the minus 2x which we're encouraged to do by what we're having to show. So if we take that out we're left with this then tidying up the bracket we get this. So there we go we're, we've got we've shown that it's this where f of x is a cubic function that bit there in the bracket is a cubic function. Right, now we've got to st show the range of G. So the range of G are the maximum Y values we have up here and minimum value we have down here. So I've got to work out these two Y values here and here. So to do that, uh, I'm going to differentiate the curve, which I've done already. Set it equal to naught because it's naught at the maximum and the minimum. So setting this to naught, I then... Um, uh, this can't be naught. You think about it. This um, any um, anything where we've got um, x in the power can never be equal to naught. So in order for this product to be naught, this cubic here has to be naught. So we need to solve this being naught. So factorising, taking out the x, and then further factorising this quadratic, I'm left with this, giving me values of x being naught, a half, and two. Well, obviously naught's this one. I don't want that one half is at the maximum and two is at the minimum. So substituting these two x values back into the actual curve itself I get my y values of 1 over 8e and for when, for, uh, when x is 2 I get my y value of minus 4 over e to the 4. So my range of the function g of x is going to be greater than or equal to minus 4 over e to the 4 but less than or equal to 1 over uh, 8, eight to, the, to the e. So state for part c, state a reason why the, why the inverse function uh, does not exist. Well it's because it's not a 1 to 1. We can see that we've got uh, here we've got a many to 1 function so for various values of x we can get um, we, we get the same y value and down here, for example, that value of x here gives us a couple of y values. So we've presently got a many to one. In order for us to be able to get an inverse function, we need it to be a one to one function. And this isn't one of those.